So you've made it as far as the parking lot outside your favorite computer superstore, and you know when you go inside the store, you'll see shelf after shelf of tantalizing software, hardware, and peripherals. How do you decide what to buy? What's new? What's neat? What works? Well, it's usually best to get the advice of friends. So today, we'll gather some friends around the table as we bring you our annual Computer Consumers Buying Guide on this special edition of the Computer Chronicles. Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by the Software Publishers Association, providers of educational materials to help manage software. Don't copy that floppy. Welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Chaffee, and with me today is Paul Schindler, our software reviewer and editor with Windows Magazine. Paul, I have a neat little box I want to show off here. You know, I used to have on my night table next to my bed a telephone, and then I bought an answering machine, and then I had an alarm clock, and then I had a radio, and then I bought one box that is all those four things. This does the same thing for your office. It's the docket from Okie Data, a complete one-box document management peripheral. It is a laser printer, a pretty nice laser copy. We just printed that out. It is a fax machine. Here's your telephone keypad. It is a scanner, and it is a copy machine. It does it all. It costs about $3,900, but you don't need four boxes in your office anymore, just one. And in fact, it replaces maybe $6,000 worth of equipment. What do you have? Well, I have a very similar situation, Stuart. I've got here the NEC CD-ROM Express Packet. Now, it's based around a, an external CD-ROM player mm -hmm. that works with either the Macintosh or the PC. You specify at the time you buy it. In addition to getting this player, you also get a pair of speakers mm -hmm. for stereo sound, and you get 10... CD-ROMs wow. full of software and images. The set varies depending on whether you buy the Macintosh version mm -hmm. or the PC version. But the idea is this is hundreds of dollars worth of software and essentially you're getting a free CD-ROM if you figure the retail price of this uh, software. So it's a great entry into CD-ROM yeah. computing. Two good buying suggestions to start off with. Paul, we're going to be joined today by Tim Baharin of Creative Strategies, Steve Fox of PC World Magazine, Jim Martin of Macworld Magazine, for a fun look at some great computer hardware and software. And we'll start in just a moment with a look at some new products for DOS and Windows. The world of computer users is, alas, a divided world. There are the Mac heads, there are the PC fans, and there are the real fanatics, those who still love their Amiga, their Atari, or their Apple II GS. Well, today, we'll begin with products for PC users, and here to give us their picks of the year are Steve Fox, Senior Features Editor with PC World Magazine, our friend Tim Baharin, President of Creative Strategies, Inc., and here with me on this side of the table again, Paul Schindler of Windows Magazine. Steve, you get the honor of going first. What neat toys are you going to show us? Oh, great. Well, I'm lucky. I actually have two toys. This looks a lot like a pen, you'll notice, but actually this is a tablet. It's made, from, uh, it's made by a company named Wacom, uh -huh. and I use it much like I would a mouse. If you'll notice, I'm not actually touching this tablet. And I'm going to be uh, demonstrating a product called Fractal Design Sketcher. I'll just, uh, I'm going to open something. Uh, well, I can't really see what I'm doing here. Let's yeah. go. <laughs> There yes. you go. New, okay. And I'm going to be uh, opening a new piece of art. Now, as you will quickly notice, I am not an artist, uh, but I can still do some things that are pretty neat with this. But you do play one on television. Uh, yes, absolutely. <laughs> um, what this does is it's going to mimic the, uh, the sort of uh, the brushes. Strokes. So this uh -huh. is a charcoal stroke, mm -hmm. and actually it's pressure sensitive, so that's a darker stroke. I mean, I can mm -hmm. do the same thing with a pen, and we'll just wait until it finishes churning here. And uh, yes, it's having some fun. Uh, come to us. There we okay. go. And that gives more of a pan. Let me uh, show you a couple other effects here, many of which are a Looks lot of fun. Lots of turns There's a spray can, uh, and as one would expect, let's just pick a color. You notice this is black and white. There is, of course, a, a color version of this. Um, this just, just came out, and it once again, I can change the darkness. Let's say I uh, wanted to do something resembling calligraphy here, and uh, we just pick the calligraphy tool, and uh, let's try something here. Mm -hmm. And can you lighten up the pressure? Okay. I will get something lighter, or I can make it darker, or anything like mm -hmm. that. Of course, calligraphy is not one of my fortes, but if I were doing this sort of thing, it's very likely uh, that I would want to um, change the paper background. And there is a way I can do that. I'll, I'll pick corrugations here, and I'm going to now 
go to effects and I'm going to you notice apply surface texture and it will actually pick the light source and I'm going to be able to change what the background is it's doing the work now this is uh, pretty much uh, uh, difficult to do as far as needing a lot of processor time and energy now you hear a lot about of course paint programs this is actually a paint program that you would paint with mm -hmm. there's a background yeah. there I'll show you one that's really fun here artists okay we have uh, Seurat of course Seurat was known for pointillism and this does a sort of a mimicking of that <laughs> sort of effect great. so you can do it on your own and then not to be left out uh, Vincent himself is here there's a little Van Gogh and we'll change the color on that and he was of course known for those sort of brush strokes well let's see if we can get open space here uh, yeah. that also had uh, this special sort of effect to them and there you can you can see it there and uh, we'll just go with uh, with one more here under special and this is one that has no real name it's called this uh, distorto it's not any brush that I actually know of but if you look famous Italian painter. yes ah, yes uh, Gustavo <laughs> distorto was very famous for this this is a it's new like product water yeah yeah well we also have uh, we'll just go yeah. one more we have here. literal water. okay we have water huh. and of course if you pick water you can Pour smear things it, huh? you see that oh, wow. we're just sort of smearing here and you can grab it this is $149. Of course, the tablet is a lot more as it works okay, out. Okay, so it's Fractal Designer. That's uses right. And how much is the tablet? It's too? about $600. Wow. Um, but uh, yeah. pressure sensitive and a lot of pretty fun. Nice. And uh, that pretty much covers it on this. Okay, nice toy. Okay, Tim, we're going to turn to you. What do you have for us? A couple of really uh, interesting products. The first one is one called Lotus Organizer for Windows. <clears throat> I have carried a pocket organizer for years, yeah. and yet I also carry a portable. And this is one of the first ones that I've seen that I personally would really use. You have the calendar here where you can go through a normal calendar on the front page, but a real nice to-do list where I can go in and write things. They come back and remind me, have mm -hmm. uh, some memory stuff there. My normal address book that I would have. And then a good little notepad where I can talk about um, things that I'm going to do here. I've got a proposal project, pr uh, mm -hmm. projections, <coughs> vacation, and it will also uh, uh, put tabs on that for me. And then a really good planner, one a full year planner where I can go in and That's nice. every day set up etc. This is a really nice little product, sells for $149 uh, uh, and is, uh, is just, just become available. So if you have your notebook, you don't need to carry that organizer no. anymore. No, it's really a good one. The other product that uh, I'm going to show you today is actually kind of a, a good little font, a series of font products. Uh -huh. The first one is the Flintstone fonts. Flintstone's when they first fonts. told me from Bitstream <laughs> that they had... a productivity tool, That's right. right. <laughs> they said that they had these little fonts and I, uh, from Flintstone, and I go, oh, really? And he said, yeah, they're called bedrock fonts. <laughs> and I thought they were putting me on, but the first one is Flintstones. Then they have another pack just for the, what they call winter holiday. Uh -huh. And then a third one, which uh, all the Trekkies will love, favorite. which is Star Trek. And uh, what we're going to do here you is have just any you can show us? quickly bring up uh, a sheet that I have that has all of them on there, and you'll see... The first one oh, is the holiday Happy reason. Holidays, yeah. but it's actually got uh, all of the different Flintstone characters, right, Pebbles right. and Bam Bam and the whole group. Then, then you have some images. Then you go farther down, you've got uh, the Christmas Trek. fonts. Yeah. And then they actually have the fonts oh, from Star nice. Trek, yeah. from the Enterprise and the Star Trek movies <laughs> that were actually licensed from Paramount for this use. You can license anything these days. Yeah, Even fonts from a movie. Right? 1995, <laughs> great little... Uh, gifts and yeah. good product for this uh, holiday. It's Klingon too, doesn't it? It's Klingon. Klingon Unfortunately, <laughs> Klingon wasn't in there. <laughs> yeah. All right, it is your turn, Paul. What do you got? Thank you very much, Stuart. I'm uh, going to be showing uh, Print Shop Deluxe. Uh, I'll start just by showing the, uh, the packaging so you can find it easily in the store. It's uh, 80 bucks, and uh, it's the Windows version of the long-existing DOS yeah. program, the single most popular uh, uh, home right. printing application. Uh, people have been using it for making my right. own Children have been using it to make uh, holiday cards mm -hmm. and birthday cards for years. Yeah, now it's in Windows shop, yeah. and a very new look. Uh, actually, uh, it's uh, ironic. Uh, maybe this will uh, help Broderbund because uh, I think Print Shop probably bears the distinction of being the world's most frequently pirated software, <laughs> yeah. DOS, uh, along with its add ons. Uh, they take advantage of the Windows environment by having true type fonts. Now, I just picked one here and wrote the uh, uh -huh. Computer Chronicles on an Egyptian uh, card background. But uh, this program would have access to all of the uh, true type fonts, which means that they're scalable, uh, they're rotatable. You can you can grab this, and uh, uh, if you were more com ah, I know how to do that. Yes, if you're more competent than I am, you can actually <laughs> you can actually grab those and <laughs> rotate them. Uh, if you uh, if you start off to do a new card, 
uh, you get the choice of uh, oh, whether you want to do a greeting nice card, thing. a sign, a banner. Yeah. So much better than the DOS version. Uh, now, it's not just because I'm with Windows Magazine, but I actually <laughs> believe that a graphical user interface gives you so much more information and makes it so much easier to make your decisions. The most common, at least in our house, mm -hmm. use for print mm -hmm. shop is the creation of greeting cards, particularly birthday cards, customized birthday cards. And you get your choice of formats, and you see what format you're going to get before you choose it. Um, then the next step is uh, to, uh, to choose from a uh, broad selection of uh, backgrounds, such things as baby animals, bon voyage, mm. clown and hoop, uh, dinner food, Easter basket, Egyptian party, haunted house. Uh, you know, we could, uh, we could compose a, uh, a uh, Halloween card right mm. here. And then within each background, there's a series of layouts that have to do with where you put text and, uh, and their clip art graphics. Oh, uh, I text. Along. I'm sorry, Stuart. Um, so that's Print Shop. It's eighty dollars for Windows. This is the Logitech hand scanner. Now I know we've talked about it before, and the only reason I bring it up again is the price continues to drop on this product. Retail price for the Model Thirty Two mm -hmm. Black and White hand scanner is one hundred and fifty dollars. Street price is a hundred dollars and down. Now don't call and ask me where to find it. Check the catalogs. Check the back pages of the newspapers. Uh, a terrific way to get into scanning. And finally, X Tree for Windows. Uh, much better than X Tree for DOS, and perfect for zipping, uh, compressing files yeah. in Windows. A beautiful package. That's uh, ninety-nine dollars. All right, quickly, just a couple of toys I want to point out. This is a wonderful new thing from Disney Software called Stunt Island. Huh. It is a flight simulator. It is a movie-making simulator. It's fan you can fly 45 different planes. You have eight okay. cameras you can run, so you actually film your own stunts ah. flying the airplane. My you can goodness. put voiceover sounds on top of it. I don't know what you'd call it. It's kind of a new category. Terrific program from Disney. I think it's 49 bucks or so. A couple other things. Uh, if you write speeches and you do a lot of stuff, Quote Master Plus for Windows. It's a Bartlett's online in Windows. Very, very effective. If you write speeches, you've got to tell jokes at the beginning, right? So you can get just joking, a collection of thousands of jokes. My favorite part of that, if the jokes really fail, you can always wear the glasses and the nose that comes along with it, and then they laugh at you just because of that. This is a nice program, fantastic Japanese language instru instruction program called Power Japanese for Windows. It teaches you stroke by stroke how to draw the characters, teaches you how to speak, comes with its own sound adapter. You don't have to have a sound adapter. Go into your parallel port. In here, you plug your headphones. headphones. All done. Fantastic. Finally, you were talking about things that we've seen before but have come down in price. Combined television and your computer. Now, we've yeah. seen this. We saw this a couple of years ago yeah. for $800. $270 or so you can now put this board into your, t into your PC and you have a television set. Last but not least, a little flashing over here. Uh -huh. <laughs> if you really want to show you're a computer guy, you get these computer suspenders. They're available in Boston for $7.95. Okay. Great. In the early days, about 10 years ago, matter of fact, you had to be very clever to find a place to buy computer products. Maybe a Radio Shack store somewhere or a mail order house. Well, that has obviously all changed. Today, you find PCs, Macs, software, and other goodies in the most unlikely places, like right next to the refrigerators and the washing machines at Sears. Sears, where America shops for clothes, appliances, and computers. You know, you think of uh, Craftsman tools when you come to Sears and our Kenmore line and whatnot. And when people walk up and down, you know, walk up and down the aisles, they see that we do have a computer department, and it's pretty big, and we have a lot of equipment in the apartment. They stop in. And, you know, they don't just, they don't buy the first time, but now it's in their mind, and they come back in and say, I was here the other day or something like that. Can you show me a computer? Sears carries top-of-the-line computers, such as the IBM PS1 and the Apple Macintosh, and it carries less expensive PC clones like Packard Bell. You can also buy familiar software packages at Sears. Why buy computer hardware or software at Sears? One of the big reasons is that many people have just one credit card, a Sears card. Another reason is the buyer's belief that Sears won't be out of business in a week, something that's not always true of your little neighborhood computer shop. According to the salesman here, one important reason why people buy computers at Sears rather than from a mail order house is that they think Sears will support them with service. As far as maintenance, uh, it should break. Un unfortunately, if something should happen to it. They have um, a very large fleet, 17,000, I believe service technicians that can't come to the home. So you're always being taken care of after the sale, as opposed to a mail order where you have to box it up, uh, send it back, and, and wait for it to return. But for most buyers, there was another reason they bought their computer at Sears. Bottom line reason was price. Bottom line reason was price again, and their ability to provide me with the machine in a reasonable amount of time. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Janelle Stelson.
right, time now for goodies for Macintosh users, and here to guide us through all the toys are Jim Martin of Macworld Magazine, back with us Tim Baharan of Creative Strategies, and Paul Schindler of Windows Magazine, and you have, what, a bunch of CD-ROMs you want to show us, Jim, huh? Yeah, there's a lot of interesting stuff happening with CD-ROMs right now, um, particularly because of QuickTime, yeah. which is Apple's uh, system extension, which lets you run video on any computer without the hardware that you usually need. So which ones you have? So I've got uh, the new Grolier Multimedia Encyclopedia. Mm -hmm. It's basically 21 volume encyclopedia on one disc. And uh, unlike the encyclopedia that you would normally get, uh, it's got the QuickTime movie, it's uh -huh. got computer generated animations, um, color maps, and uh, text and graphics. So we are going to look, whoops, what have we done here? Um, there are a couple of different ways that you can look at information in here. This menu bar lets you look at different types of information such as maps, mm -hmm. uh, still photos, and so forth. And here is the QuickTime movie icon, which I think is... How much is this, Jim? Uh, this is $395, which may sound a lot for a CD-ROM, but... For a 21 volume a 21 volume encyclopedia, movies, that's right. Animation. So if you're interested in, say, historical events and personalities, mm -hmm. you click on that particular line. And let's say you're an aviation buff, you can look at a QuickTime movie of Amelia Earhart. Um, there's Charles Lindbergh's solo transatlantic uh -huh. flight. My favorite is the Hindenburg disaster. It's always an uplifting. <laughs> you love crashes, huh? That's right. So mm -hmm. you click on that. And uh, CD-ROM drives are a little slow, but mm -hmm. they get there eventually. Okay. So here we've got the QuickTime window. You click on They're this. Riding majestically shorter, like some great feather. And you've got the famous mm -hmm. flag just standing here. The radio announcer happened to be there that day to yes. the uh, the the mm -hmm. yes. the mm -hmm. the the see the last one. Yes. Who was the whole crash? Mm-hmm. From 1937. Uh, if you really love this, I assume you love the part at the end, right? Oh, yeah. Because we were hanging in one. Yeah, you talk about system crashes. This is a serious one. It burst into flames. Get it started. Get it started. It's right. And it's right. Right. Oh, terrible. Mm -hmm. Oh, my. Get out of the way, please. Well, it certainly brings an encyclopedia and to and life. It's not different than reading about it. Huh? Yes. Yeah. 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 This is a yes. So, if you, uh, once no, you've had your fill of disaster, <laughs> you can read about it. Uh, you click on this button here. Hypertext kind of Hypertext, thing. Hypertext, right. Uh -huh. And it'll give you, uh, in this case, four different options. And these, there's some that are more general, and then here's one that's very specific about the Hindenburg. You call that up. And this gives you the text that's in the encyclopedia itself, the, mm -hmm. the um, volumes. And you could also uh, print out these entries you if can you print needed them to. Out, right. And it uh, gives you some bibliography and caption. If you want to go back to the movie one more time, you can click on that icon. Mm -hmm. So that kind of gives you a taste of... Uh, okay, I guess in fairness to the speed, I mean, if you wanted to go find another volume from your 21 books, it would take you some time to walk over to the bookshelf and put the book sure. out yes, and find Yes, and then the you have to carry it and lug it around. Yeah. And there are faster CD players than the yeah. one we're using yes, today. Yes, this is the, uh, the older Apple CD-ROM yeah. drive. They've come out with a new one, the 300i, and it's, I think, about yeah. twice as fast. Okay, well, what's what's the other CD you want to show us? Okay. Uh, the other one is called Funny, and it is an actual full-time, full-length movie uh -huh. on CD-ROM, which wow. I think is pretty unusual. Okay, you're going to switch uh, Yes, I need to switch on? discs. All right, let me, let me do a couple of things while you're getting right. the next one up. Uh, while we're kind of in the multimedia mode here, I have a couple of things for guys who like to play music on their Macintosh. This is kind of neat. This is Audio Shock from Opcode. It's under 100 bucks, about $89 or something. It really gives you a digital audio studio on your Macintosh. It lets you mix sampled sounds from a disc with actual sounds from a CD, from a CD-ROM. Uh, it's kind of neat, 89 bucks from uh, Opcode called Audio Shock. This is really neat if you're into music. Instead of spending a couple hundred bucks on one of those MIDI keyboards, this is the whole ball game. This is a whole tone generator from Yamaha. It has 192 instruments in it, eight different drum sets, 28-note polyphony in here. I mean, it's a powerful, powerful thing that turns your Mac into a full-blown music studio. And it's not only a Mac. In fact, if you see back here, this little switch, it's got a built-in MIDI in interface that'll run on a PC, run on a Mac, do anything. It's the newest thing from Yamaha if you're really into music. That's kind of neat. So Audio Shop and this Yamaha Tone Generator. And how much is that? Uh, this is about 400 bucks, something like that, for the Tone Generator, 89 bucks for Audio Shop. Uh, great to turn your Macintosh into a music studio. How are we doing over here? Okay, I think we're ready to go. Um, one of the first screens that you get is this uh, sort of tongue-in-cheek FBI, <laughs> FYI <laughs> warning. It says the film contains something to offend all <laughs> thinking, feeling, life forms. Mm -hmm. Please exit if you can't take a joke. Well, I think we can handle okay, this. Okay, go you? for it. All right, so let's click on this little man here. And 
we were okay. Here we have two options. You can watch the entire 80-minute film <laughs> in a linear, traditional oh. way, which I have yet to do. I don't <laughs> think I will. Right. Or we can go the self-service route. This being the 90s, this is okay. probably what we'll do. So then you click on that window. And you can sort of pick the funny movie you, sequence there, it's you just want. The, the movie is a series of clips in which a variety of different people, from bartenders to okay. uh, Dick Cavett pull, to pull, Henny Young. Pull one, one up for us. All right, so let's look at genres. We've got four options there, and we're picking on, uh, picking on genres. And how much is this? Uh, this is forty dollars, which okay. is uh, a wow. pretty good price. Here's, Here's, a, good, yeah. Here's, Here's, a, Here's, Here's, Here's a good choice. Force okay. Bell, Truly Tasteless, <laughs> uh, Sight Gags, True Stories, Riddles. Okay, which one are you going to go so for? So I'm going to try for window number five over here, to the point. Okay. <laughs> and let's see what that brings Category up. Category is to the point. So then we've got this other series of panels, kind of like, like the Hollywood Squares yeah. or something. Okay. Uh, and here's one that's probably everybody's favorite, very familiar. And uh, here we go. I'll take one. Take one. Take one. Whoops. Oh. Well, we didn't get all of that. Let's see if that'll work again. Take my wife, please. <laughs> <laughs> Still so, gets a laugh, right? Yeah. A thousandth time. You yeah, know? for the millionth time. We've got all these are Henny Youngman down here, and there's a variety of different That's things pretty good. Here. All right, Tim, it's your turn, and you're going to show us how to morph on a Mac. Right. This is a new product called Morph, and if you look at the screen, you see a picture of our first president, George Washington. But when we start the little morphing transition, you'll watch and notice that he begins to change, and all of a sudden now he's Mr. Lincoln. Wow. And uh, he goes on to various other presidents. Mm. Mm before returning. Does that one come with the package, Tim? This particular one does. It ends so up you can Benjamin create your Franklin. own then, huh? Yes. It's really an exciting package. And for $149, it's a really neat little product to have. Is it a toy or would you actually use it? Well, it's not. I, a lot of people in the graphics world are going to use this. Yeah. You, can, you can do it for presentations and you can even apply it to charts and graphs to be able to make them go from one chart to another in a real yeah. nice transition. It's really kind of a nice product. I guess the Michael Jackson thing was like, you know, a million dollar computer, right? And it was right. fifty bucks more. Absolutely. What what morphing was done in the big and systems were on mainframes, you can do now on a Macintosh. It's really quite Pretty exciting nice. there. Uh, one other program I want to just take a quick yeah. look at here is from TeamMaker. And this is a uh, what's called a click art events and holiday pack. And this is kind of a neat little product because for $49 you get these cartoons that are used specifically for um, different events and holidays. Uh -huh. And uh, we're just going to take a quick look here and show you what you've got here is uh, Christmas and mm -hmm. 4th of July and Easter and Halloween. Halloween you have Boo and <laughs> all these other little uh, oh. cute things that are set up there. Or you can uh, go to Christmas and have your happy holiday scenes and uh, cartoons that set up you can literally put into That's any nice. document. Really yeah. nice little product for the Macintosh. Okay, two nice things. All right, what do you got, Paul? I've got two things I want to show very quickly, Stuart. First of all, there's a Fair Witness. Now, it's $500. It's a work processor. It's an outliner. It's a spreadsheet. This is an it's, information spreadsheet. It's an information spreadsheet. It's it's a fascinating product. It's it's a better way to get organized on a project. Uh -huh. uh, you you, you uh, outline your project. You can use spreadsheets to describe the aspects. You can lay them out on a timeline. You can vote and prioritize the aspects. You can share it in groupware. A terrific new idea. Okay. Another terrific idea for, for the huge storage that both the, the Windows and the Macintosh uh -huh. require these days is the Bernoulli. This is 90 megabytes. Now, I'll admit these cartridges are a couple hundred bucks each, but they are absolutely worth it. This is the player, and I brought the transportable version. You know, uh, you know the old saying: if it has a handle, it's uh, portable. Mm -hmm. It's a thousand dollars, but it uh, it works with a Macintosh or with a PC for Windows, and it is the finest and least obtrusive external data storage device. Uh, terrific density, terrific reliability. All right, thank you, Paul. I've got a couple things I want to show very quickly. Lots of sports simulations out there, you know, for tennis and right. for golf and so on. This is the first sailing simulation I've ever seen. Uh, sailing program, you run on your Macintosh, you can run your boat in the America's Cup, you can control all the normal things you would on your boat, and of course there are variations in the wind conditions, the water conditions, and so on. It is $59, kind of neat program that runs on the Macintosh. One other thing in the first segment on the PC, PC segment, I was talking about writing tools, and we showed the jokes you put on your computer and the quotes and so on. This I find fantastic. It's the new American Heritage Dictionary. Mm -hmm. I carry it around on my notebook. It's a full 300,000 word dictionary with all the synonyms, with all the, the origins of the words, the pronunciations, and so on. A 500,000 word thesaurus, really handy uh, if you do a lot of writing, you have the dictionary right there with you. 
Okay, guys, that's all the time we have. Thanks a lot. That's our special Computer Consumers Buying Guide show for this year. We'll see you here again next week on Computer Chronicles. Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by the Software Publishers Association. Providers.